Today, we're gonna to be diving into something that might just blow your mind. Imagine getting a Harvard education for free. No, this isn't a glitch in the matrix, and no, you don't need a time machine or a small fortune. We're talking about five incredible free online courses from Harvard that could skyrocket your careers faster than you can say Veritas. So whether you're a tech enthusiast, a data dynamo, or a wordsmith in the making, there's something here for you. But before we dive in, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, these are courses that are actually from Harvard. Yes, they're completely free. And no, you don't need to be a genius to take them. All you need is curiosity and the willingness to learn. So buckle up, grab your favorite note-taking tool, and let's embark on this Ivy League adventure. Kicking off our list is the crown jewel of Harvard's online offerings, which is the CS50 Introduction to Computer Science. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, Thinking. Computer science, isn't that just for tech geeks? Well, hold on to your hoodies because this course is about to change your perception faster than you can say, hello world. CS50 is not just a course, it's a phenomenon. It's Harvard's largest course on campus and has become one of the most popular MOOCs or MOOCs, which stands for Massive Open Online Courses globally. Now, according to Class Central, as of 2023, over 3.7 million people have enrolled in CS50 online. That's more than the population of some countries. But what makes CS50 so special? Well, it's like the Swiss army knife of tech courses. You'll learn Scratch, which is a beginner-friendly programming language. You'll learn C, which is the grandfather father of modern programming languages. You'll learn Python, which is the Swiss army knife of coding. You'll learn SQL, which is the language that makes databases sing. Plus you're gonna learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is the holy trinity of web development. And that's just scratching the surface. But don't just take my word for it. Let's hear from someone who's been through the CS50 gauntlet. Sarah said, before CS50, I thought algorithms were just for tech geniuses. Now I use algorithmic thinking in my everyday life, from optimizing my grocery shopping to managing projects at work. It's like I've been given a new pair of eyes to see the world. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds great, but is it really for beginners? And the answer is a resounding yes. David J. Milan, the charismatic professor behind CS50, has a knack for making complex concepts digestible. And he once explained memory allocation using a phone book and a saw. Yes, you heard that right. But CS50 isn't just about learning to code. It's about developing a problem-solving mindset that can be applied to any field. So whether you're a marketer trying to optimize campaigns, a teacher developing a curriculum, or an entrepreneur building the next big thing, the computational thinking skills you'll gain from CS50 are invaluable. And the best part, you can take this course at your own pace, whether you're a night owl coding at 2 a.m. or an early bird catching the programming worm. CS50 fits into your schedule. So are you ready to embark on this computational journey? Remember, in the words of Professor Milan, what ultimately matters in this course is not so much where you end up relative to your classmates, but where you end up relative to yourself when you began. Now, let's move on to our next course, which is going to turn you into a data wizard faster than you can say, are you ready? Welcome to the world of data science specifically R basics. And no, we're not talking about courses for pirates, although shouting R might become your new favorite thing. This course is part of Harvard's professional certificate in data science program, and it's your ticket to becoming a data dynamo. But why R, you might ask? Well, in the words of Hadley Wickham, chief scientist at R Studio, R is a language for people who want to get things done. It's not a language for computer scientists. It's a language for scientists who compute. In other words, R is the Swiss army knife of data science. It's versatile, powerful, and once you get the hang of it, it's incredibly fun to use. So what exactly will you learn from this course? Well, buckle up because we're about to take a deep dive. So first of all, there's R syntax, the grammar of data science. Then there's data types, understanding the building blocks of information. Then you've got vectors, which is your new best friend in data manipulation. Then you've got sorting because sometimes order matters. Then you've got data frames, which is the powerhouse of data organization. And then you've got data visualization, which is turning numbers into eye candy. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Data science sounds boring. It's just staring at numbers all day, right? Well, let me stop you right there. Data science is like being a detective in the digital age. You're uncovering hidden patterns, solving complex puzzles, and sometimes predicting the future. So it's kind of like having a superpower. Don't believe me? Let's hear from someone who's been through this course. This person says, before taking the course, I thought data science was all about complex mathematics, but R basics showed me that it's really about telling stories with data. Now I use R in my marketing to analyze campaign performance, and it's revolutionized how we make decisions. But why should you care about data science? Well, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employment of data scientists is projected to grow 36% from 2021 to 2031, much faster than the average for all occupations. That's not just growth, that's an explosion. And it's not just tech companies that need data scientists. From healthcare to finance, from sports to entertainment, every industry is looking for people who can make sense of their data. So by learning R, you're not just picking up a new skill, you're opening doors to countless opportunities. But here's the kicker. This course isn't just about learning R, it's about developing a data-driven mindset. You'll learn to ask the right questions, 
organizations approach the problem systematically and communicate your findings effectively. And these are skills that will serve you well in any career. And the best part, you can learn all of this for free at your own pace from the comfort of your favorite chair. Whether you're a complete beginner or someone looking to add another tool to your data science toolkit, this course has something for you. So are you ready to speak the language of data? Remember, in the world of data science, curiosity is your greatest asset. And as the famous statistician John Tukey once said, the best thing about being a statistician is that you get to play in everyone's backyard. Now let's switch gears and dive into a field that's bridging the gap between the humanities and the digital world. So get ready to become a digital renaissance person. Welcome to the fascinating world of digital humanities. Now I know what you're thinking, digital humanities, isn't that like reading Shakespeare on a Kindle? Well, hold on to your ebooks because it's so much more than that. Digital humanities is where technology meets culture, where algorithms meet art, and where data meets storytelling. It's like giving the humanities a superpower. And this course offered by Harvard University is your ticket to becoming a cultural code breaker. But what exactly will you learn? Well, let's break it down. First, there's digital tools for humanities research, which is your new digital Swiss army knife. Then there's data visualization and humanities, making centuries of culture visually digestible. Then there's text analysis and mining, which is uncovering hidden patterns and vast amounts of text. Then you've got digital mapping and spatial analysis, which is putting history and culture on the map, literally. And then you've got digital preservation and curation, which is safeguarding our cultural heritage in the digital age. Now you might be wondering, why should I care about digital humanities? Why? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered what Shakespeare's social network looked like or how the sentiment in Jane Austen's novel changed over time? Or maybe you're curious about how the language in hip hop lyrics has evolved over the decades. Well, Digital Humanities gives you the tool to answer these questions and so many more. So it's kind of like having a time machine and a supercomputer rolled into one. But don't just take my word for it. Let's hear from someone who's ventured into this digital cultural frontier. As a history major, I was skeptical about bringing technology into my studies, but this course opened my eyes to a whole new world of possibilities and I'm now using network analysis to study the spread of ideas during the Enlightenment. It's like being a historical detective with a really cool magnifying glass. But why is digital humanities important in today's job market? Well, according to a 2023 report by the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, employers are increasingly looking for graduates who can bridge the gap between technology and humanities. They want people who can not only crunch numbers, but can also understand their cultural context. In other words, digital humanities graduates are like Swiss army knives of the job market. They can code, they can analyze, and they can tell compelling stories with data. So whether you're interested in journalism, history, or data analysis, or even tech entrepreneurship, the skills you learn in this course will give you a unique edge. But with that being said, this is one that may not directly get you a job. And that's where companies like Coursera come in, where their certifications directly do help you to get a job. And I've talked about them on this channel before. I've actually done tier lists and top 10 rankings, etc. Some of the professional certificates on Coursera, you can actually audit for free. And in order to get the certs, it's usually only 40 to $50 per month. So definitely check those out because the first seven days is free regardless of what you do. And I'll put those down in the description and the pinned comment below. So click down there. Now let's move on to a course that's going to turn you into a modern day Cicero. Get ready to master the art of persuasion. And this is the art of persuasive writing and public speaking. Now, before you run away thinking this is just about fancy words and long speeches, let me stop you right there. This course is about to turn you into a communication superhero. And the older I get, the more important that I realize communication is. With all this stuff that's happening with AI, there's no way that AI can make you a better communicator. That's something you just have to practice and learn on your own. Because rhetoric isn't just for politicians and lawyers. It's a superpower that can boost your career in any field. Whether you're pitching an idea to your boss, presenting a project to your client, asking for a raise, or asking your significant other to take the trash out. The art of persuasion is your secret weapon. So what exactly will you learn in this course? Well, let's break it down. First, we got the three pillars of rhetoric, ethos, pathos, and logos which are your new best friends. Then you've got crafting compelling arguments because facts alone don't always cut it. Then you've got the power of storytelling, turning dry information into captivating narratives. Then you've got body language and vocal techniques because how you say it is as important as what you say because one size doesn't fit all when it comes to communication. I'm not a natural public speaker. Is this course really for me? Well, let me let you in on a little secret. Most great communicators weren't born that way. They learned and practiced these skills. And as the famous orator Cicero once said, the skill 
skill of speaking is not given to anyone, and yet it can be acquired by everyone. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear from someone who's been through this rhetoric boot camp. Before this course, I was terrified of public speaking. My palms would sweat, my voice would shake, and my mind would go blank. But learning the principles of rhetoric changed everything. I recently gave a presentation at work that led to a promotion, and it's like I've been given a superpower. But why is rhetoric so important in today's job market? Well, according to a 2023 survey by the National Association of Colleges and Employers, communication skills are the most sought after quality by employers, ranking even higher than technical skills in many fields. In other words, being able to communicate effectively isn't just a nice to have skill, it's a must have. It's the difference between having great ideas and having great ideas that get implemented. It's the secret sauce that can take your career from good to great. But here's the real magic of rhetoric. It's not just about speaking, it's about thinking. As you learn to construct your own arguments and analyze others' persuasive techniques, you'll find yourself becoming a more critical thinker. You'll be able to see through flashy but empty arguments and craft more compelling ones of your own. And the best part? You can practice these skills every day. Every email you write, every meeting you attend, every conversation you have is an opportunity to apply what you learn in this course. And as the philosopher Aristotle once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So are you ready to become a master of persuasion? Remember, in the world of rhetoric, your words are your wand, your voice is your superpower, and every conversation is an opportunity to change minds, and in some cases, hearts. Now let's dive into our final course, which is going to turn you into a digital wizard. Get ready to enter the fascinating world of artificial intelligence. Welcome to the course that's going to make you feel like you're living in the future. Introduction to Artificial Intelligence with Python. Now I know what you're thinking. AI, isn't that just about robots taking over the world? Well, hold on to your neural networks because AI is so much more than that. It's the technology behind your smartphone's voice assistant, the recommendation algorithms of your favorite streaming service, and even the systems that detect fraudulent transactions on your credit card. In short, AI is everywhere and this course is your ticket to understanding and creating it. So what exactly will you learn in this course? Well, let's break it down. First of all, you've got Python programming, the language of AI wizards. Then you've got search algorithms, teaching computers to find the best solutions. Then you've got knowledge representation, which is how to make computers think. Then you've got machine learning, which is giving computers the ability to learn from data. And then you've got one that's very exciting, which is neural networks, the building blocks of deep learning. And then you've got natural language processing, which is helping others understand and generate human language. Now you might be thinking, this sounds complicated. Do I need to be a math genius to take this course? And the answer is a resounding no. While some mathematical concepts are involved, the course is designed to be accessible to beginners. And as the famous computer scientist Alan Turing once said, we can only see a short distance ahead, but we can see plenty there that needs to be done. But don't just take my word for it. Let's hear from someone who's ventured into the AI frontier. Before this course, AI seemed like magic to me. Now I understand the principles behind it and can even create my own AI models. I recently used what I learned to develop a chatbot for my company's customer service, and it's been a game changer. But why should you care about AI? Well, according to a 2023 report, AI and machine learning specialists are among the top 10 jobs with increasing demand. The report predicts that by 2025, 85 million jobs may be displaced by a shift in the division of labor. And this division of labor is, of course, between humans and machines. But 97 million new roles may emerge that are more adapted to this new division of labor. In other words, AI isn't just a cool technology, it's reshaping the job market. So by learning AI, you're not just picking up a new skill, you're future-proofing your career. So whether you're in healthcare, finance, marketing, or pretty much any other field, understanding AI can give you a significant edge. But here's the real magic of AI. It's not just about creating smart machines, it's about solving complex problems in innovative ways. As you learn to develop AI systems, you'll find yourself approaching problems differently, thinking more systematically, and seeing patterns where others see chaos. And the best part? This course gives you hands-on experience. You'll be coding your own AI systems, from game-playing agents to image recognition algorithms. And as the famous computer scientist Fei-Fei Li said, if you want to make AI robust and a great technology for humanity, you've got to make it diverse. So are you ready to become an AI wizard? Remember, in the world of AI, every problem is an opportunity, every data set a treasure trove, and every algorithm a step toward the future. So yeah, these five courses are phenomenal, but they may not help you directly get a job. They'll teach you the underlying skills that will indirectly get you a job, and they may teach you skills that will make you make way more money in the future. But if you want to check out a video on training and certifications that will directly help you get a job, definitely check out that video of the best Coursera certs, and you can check that out by clicking right here.